Hi there! So before I start this video, I, I have to state, I just have to put it out there, I'm not a professional producer, I'm not an expert by any means, in fact the opposite. I'm still learning, I'm still a complete basic bitch. So when I give this advice, please know that it's not coming from someone that is well seasoned in producing. I'm really just at the beginning of my journey, but I wanted to share with you some tips that I have found really, really helpful because when I first started writing songs, I would, when I, when I was asked to give like demos to producers, I would just record songs that I'd written on acoustic guitar, just, just me and a guitar singing, and then a producer would kind of have to guess what I wanted. I would have to kind of say, yeah, like imagine like this bit with some like, like synth and piano over the top, and a producer would be like, what? And there have been times where I felt like the finished product has not really been what I had in mind. I actually couldn't tell you what songs that has applied to, but I know it has applied to some. So as you heard in my last video, uh, the first ever demo I did of Dirt, I wrote on acoustic guitar, and that was the version that I gave to uh, a guy called Ian, and then we took it forward and, and made it bigger and better. But even back in August last year, I was still just sending acoustic demos to people. I was only writing on guitar because I was just... Number one, I was too lazy to try and produce. Number two, I was just not confident and I figured that me attempting to produce something would be embarrassing so I never tried. But if you do watch a ton of my videos you might have seen that I wrote a song in 24 hours for a sponsorship. And that song that you hear in that video I produced completely by myself. Now I'm not saying that's a perfect production, it's not. Uh, it, it's, it's, it, it's weak at points, but if you compare that acoustic demo of Dirt that I did to Cute Without You, I think I've really come along in terms of production. I've learned a lot over the last few months from sitting with producers and also just because I've been taking a few tips on board and I wanted to share some of those tips with you. Again, not an expert, not trying to be patronizing, but this helped me, so I hope it helps you. This only really applies if you're starting out or if you're too scared to start out at all. Don't be scared, tip one, I guess. So the first actual tip is the most patronizing of all of the tips, so after this it gets better. If you've got it in mind what kind of songs you want to produce, whether it's pop or hip hop, R&B, EDM, dubstep, whatever, whatever it is that you want to produce, you have to listen to the music that is currently being made in that genre. In fact, I would expand on that, you need to listen to everything. Even stuff that you really don't think you're gonna like. It sounds so stupid, I know, but inspiration really can come from anywhere. There might be like one simple sample or one sort of chord progression that you love in a song that you would never usually listen to, and you might be able to incorporate that into your own songs. And if it wasn't for me broadening my horizons a little bit, because I used to be very sort of um, particular about what I liked, and I wouldn't really branch off from that, if, I, if I'd stayed that particular, there's so many songs that wouldn't sound the way that they do now, songs that you haven't heard yet, but I, I gained a ton of inspiration from listening to the work of other producers and really thinking, how did this person achieve this? How does this sound so good? And you can't really learn unless you listen, unless you study, and you have to be prepared to study. Number two, now, oh, this one has caused a bit of debate within like, the producer community, that's a community, apparently. When you're just starting out and you don't really know how to make certain sounds or you don't know how to acquire certain drum samples, I really would recommend subscribing to a service called Splice. This has caused a lot of problems and a lot of drama because a lot of old school producers say, I hate services like Splice. You just, you just pay for a sample and all music is all samples these days. Anyone thinks they can produce, but dude, music is music. Okay? It doesn't matter how you get there, what matters is you're putting your art out into the world for other people to hear. If it wasn't for Splice, I wouldn't have half of the drama sounds that I do. There's so many other little sound effects that you can get. There are some great um, plug-in presets you can get, like for um, like Silent Massive. Massive is a, a synth plug-in and uh, I, I've used it quite a bit and I found some great presets on there. And you can also listen to like uh, demos that people have put up and you can gain a ton of inspiration because again it's just like listening to a song that you wouldn't have usually listened to. They can really inspire you and 
I've I've gained a lot from Splice. And there are other services as well, apart from Splice, that I don't use. I'm sure they're good, but I, I would recommend Splice. It's pretty cheap, I think it's like, I think it's like $7.99 a month, and you get like a few hundred credits per month, and then each like sample you buy is one, one credit, you know? Um, I'm not being paid to say that. Uh, but it's really, really good. And especially if you're starting out and you don't really know where to start, I'd say that's a pretty good place to get sounds. Tip number three, and this is really for when you're in the production thing, you know, when you've actually got your door open, D-A-W, door. Door and door sound the same in the UK, door. Just know that in these videos, when I say door, I mean door, not door. door. So this is really for when you've like started producing your track. You have to have respect for space. Not space, space, space in, in general. Within the confines of your song, you need to work out how much space you want between certain instruments. How much space are you trying to create? Why are you trying to create that space? For instance, if you take um, a ton of trap music, in fact, I'm not even gonna say trap music, I'm gonna say Dark Horse by Katy Perry because everyone knows that song. When you've got that drop, you've got drums, uh, an 808, and then the, uh, the synth up the top. So what do I really mean by space then? Well, the thing that I like to imagine, and I came up with this myself, if someone else already thought of it, I'm sorry. I like to imagine my songs as like a burger. Please bear with me, I promise it will make sense. So imagine a burger, right, that you get from a fast food restaurant. You've got, uh, you got the bun, you've got uh, the meat, then you've got the toppings like cheese and tomato, and you've got like the lettuce, and you've got like a little seasoning, a little salt and pepper, and then you've got the top bun, right? So imagine like your percussion, your drums and your bass being like near the bottom, you know, uh, the bottom bun is your drums, and then like the meat inside, that's gonna be your bass. So obviously everything is so bass heavy these days, it's very important. Then you got like the little things in the middle that aren't always necessary. You need to decide when they're necessary to you, when they're needed in your song. The cheese, the tomato, this can be like little tiny effects. This can be like a main sort of body synth going all the way through. And this is usually where your vocals are as well. Your vocals are the cheese. And then you've got um, the top stuff. So you're looking at uh, hi-hats or tambourines, shakers, all the little things that are high up in the frequency. So really, I've, I've basically taken like the EQ of a song, but turned it. So it's more of a burger rather than thinking about the EQ chart. But like, if we go back to Dark Horse by Katy Perry, where's the cheese? Where's the tomato? You know, the highest part of that drop is really the, uh, the synth going through, the top part. But you've got this ton of space in the middle and it's done because it catches your attention. Uh, and I think that's one of the reasons that trap became like such a big thing a few years ago. I mean, I could be talking out my ass, but it's just, it's the way I like to envision things. Um, there will be times where you need every single filling in your burger. There will be times where you don't need the fillings at all. It's about respecting space, knowing that sometimes a song doesn't need any space and that's fine. Don't feel pressured to just create like a trap beat. But there will be times where less is more and sometimes when you've put loads of things in and then take them out, you might panic and think, oh my God, I've stripped this back too much. It sounds bad. It's always better to add things in and take them out than start with something that's really cool and then try to pack it with more stuff. You know, oh, this needs another synth in here. Oh, we need another top line in here. You may end up ruining your song doing that. Sun is setting. Oh, not good, not good. Tip number four, which is a lot shorter than the last waffly explanation. When you are working in your door, you need to save often. There's nothing more discouraging than working on a song that you think sounds amazing and it's your best work ever. And then a plugin just makes your door crash. You don't know when you last saved and you open your door again and it says, oh, restore from auto save. And you're like, when was that? Or in the, in the worst case scenario, there might be some doors that don't auto save at all and you're back to square zero. That is the most discouraging, heartbreaking thing. I've had it happen to me before. I've had songs be completely ruined because I've lost all the magic that I had. It takes you out of the moment. So be sure to save, but not only save, but save different versions. Every time you do something that you think uh, changes the song, so adding a new synth, adding a new instrument, or doing something drastic with the EQ, mixing, mastering, etc. Save a new version. Toby taught me this. So say that I've written a song called Duh, and I, I put down the bass, and I put down the, the synth and percussion, and then um, I save that as Duh 1A. Then I add some scratch vocals over the top. 
uh, I would save that as dirt 1B. Then I go in and sort of mix the vocals a little bit so it sounds perfect. Then I maybe EQ the hi-hats so that they don't overcrowd the mix. That would be dirt 1C. Then I might think, oh, that, that synth, I'm gonna take that out. That's, that's weird in there. I mean, really, you can just mute a track rather than take it out. Don't delete tracks. Don't delete tracks. Mute them. Don't delete them. Don't do anything. Don't do any <laughs> destructive editing is what I would say. Don't do anything where you can't recover it like really easily. High tracks, mute tracks, don't delete tracks. If you're working in MIDI, uh, don't, don't just change uh, a MIDI to a different instrument. Uh, just duplicate the track, drag the MIDI file down, and then turn the instrument into that. Don't just completely destroy what you had. And also save with different versions, and then you're good to go. Then you won't have any troubles. And tip number five, which is kind of just an easy one to round off on, is you have to be willing to listen to other people, especially um, if you've asked for feedback or if you're working with a producer. I'm someone that is extremely protective of my tracks. I usually know what I want uh, and I think it's gonna sound great the way it is. There are so many songs on this upcoming album where if they were left the way that I'd originally written them, they would quite honestly sound like absolute trash. I've changed choruses, I've changed bridges, praise everything about certain songs. But if someone has an idea for you, like a suggestion, you don't have to take it, but listen to it. You have to remember that whenever you're writing a song, whenever you're recording a song, you're only hearing it from inside your head. Yes, it's going through your fucking ears, but um, you're not hearing it from the outside perspective. One thing that I love to do is send my new songs to my dad. My dad, God bless him, I love him. He knows nothing about music, okay? But he likes certain songs. He doesn't know why he likes them, but he likes them. And uh, when I first sent Dirt to him, he was like, oh, I love this. Du, 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 du. And that's when I knew I had something freaking great because my dad was singing it. To be fair, my dad has not liked any of my previous releases. He didn't like any of my last EPs, nothing. But with Dirt, that was the first song that he actually genuinely liked. And it's just great feedback. Send your songs to people, um, even people who you think might not be able to give you constructive production advice. Ask for their opinion, hey, do you like the sound of this? You know, does this sound catchy to you? And obviously, as I said, listen to people who are in the know. If they say, mm, you need to like filter off the low end of, of that bass, it's, it's, it's sounding a bit odd down there. I'm not sure why you'd filter the low end off of a bass, but still work with me here. Then be prepared to, to take that on board and try it out. You never know, someone might be smarter than you, Emma. Anyway, I hope this was helpful in some way. I don't know if you learned a lot, but what I would say is if you are where I was last August, September, where you're looking to make more professional sounding demos or even start producing your own stuff to become like a SoundCloud rapper or something, don't be afraid to try stuff. You know, um, whilst a lot of plugins and doors can be expensive, there are free versions out there. Just get to grips with stuff. It's gonna take a long time. Uh, it's gonna be a long process. I'm still learning to this day. I still can't get my head around what a compressor really does. I know the gist, but like, you know, there's still, still some stuff that I find really, really hard. It's gonna take a long time, but stick with it. And it's, it's really, really worthwhile. If, if music is something you love, being able to create it on a more professional scale is, amazing and uh, I'm really really happy with how far I've come. So thank you so much for watching, my battery is definitely about to go to sleep, but if you did find this helpful then please feel free to subscribe to my channel and give this a thumbs up maybe. I, I rarely ever ask that, that's weird. Like this video if it helped! Wow. But uh, thank you so much for watching and until next time I shall catch you later!